In today's episode, we're going to be reacting to some of the strangest videos I have found on TikTok. Let's get into it. Y'all, I think this predator just captured another video of the Fresno Nightcrawler. They said that they got a notification from their security camera that there was movement detected in their yard. And when they reviewed the footage, they captured this. This strange white being walking around in their yard that looks a lot like the Fresno Nightcrawler sightings. If you don't know what the Fresno Nightcrawler is, it is a cryptid that essentially looks like a pair of walking white pants. <laughs> the first sighting of the Fresno Nightcrawler is in Fresno, California, obviously, but this video was taken in Yosemite National Park. This is probably the most famous video of the Fresno Nightcrawler. This video was actually uploaded to the internet in like 2011. A lot of people think that this thing is some sort of extraterrestrial. But what do you guys think about this? Do you think this person actually captured a Fresno Nightcrawler on camera? Or is there another explanation for whatever is walking around in his yard? I mean, the very first part of it could just be someone in the distance walking in a dress. I am curious as to what those creatures are, if they are real. I kind of have a feeling that they're all hoax. But it, it would be really interesting to see one in person. It kind of makes me wonder if they are real. Maybe they're interdimensional. I don't know if they're necessarily extraterrestrial. Let me know what you guys think about these. Or have any of you actually seen any in person or on camera? Let me know. Do you really think Galileo saw the rings of Saturn with this thing right here? Okay, so just to put this in perspective for you guys. This is an Icon P1000 capable of 125 times magnification. 125. 125X. Yeah. Galileo and his little homemade wooden stick <laughs> stick telescope. Yeah. Sorry, it cracks me up every time I think about it. It's a little wooden telescope with no focuser, mind you. No focuser, just the, a stick. The first one he made could only achieve eight times magnification. 8X, dude, that's 8X. Like my, my phone is your, way better than that. Your smartphone can zoom in further than that. His modified later version of his telescope, the improved version, went to like 14 or 20 times magnification. Supposedly, he saw the sunspots on the sun. He saw the rings of Saturn. The rings of Saturn. I can barely and, see the rings of the P-1000, dude. And the barely. moons of Jupiter with only t 14 times magnification. Yes. Whenever this can achieve 125x. 125. And another thing, how did he observe the sunspots on the sun before they ever invented a solar filter? Yes, dude, it'll burn your eyes out, It would have burned his eyes out. I have to put a filter out. on this one, dude, and yeah. I can see the spots, but there's, there's no way, in my opinion, entertainment purposes only, yeah. that he saw a Saturn, man. And it, if, uh, there's yeah. no way, dude. It's, if you attempt to look at the sun with a telescope, you will go blind in less than a second. It yeah. will literally burn your retina yeah. Come out use of my your P1000 eye. will show you. Yeah. Just saying. So it just goes to show you people don't think, they don't question what they've been taught. But you should. You really yeah, man, just things like that, dude. A fourteen I think it got the somebody said it got up to twenty X at one time, but even twenty X still nothing there's no to that. way he saw the rings of Saturn, dude. This is a hundred times more magnification and than I can what barely Galileo see had. the rings, dude. I'm yeah. just saying these are things y'all gotta think about, man, yeah. when you're told stuff like that. I didn't think about it. When I was younger, man, until a couple years ago. Like, wait yeah. a minute. Not to mention, there was a few engineers that tried to reconstruct and make a replica of Galileo's telescope. Oh, yeah. There were huge problems in the design. <laughs> they couldn't get it to work. They couldn't get it to focus. So, But he sees did, the rings and the moons and everything around Saturn, probably. Yeah. Come on, Galileo man. never discovered anything like they claim he discovered. No, dude. It's no. all fake history. It's all fake science, yeah, false science. Which is pseudoscience. Yes. So, thousand percent, man. Yeah. Well, I just had to uh, share that with y'all real quick while we were thinking about it and talking about it, man. I mean, I definitely see where they are coming from, but there could be other things that were at play back in that time frame. What if, because there was barely any, if any at all, light pollution that made the world of difference of being able to see into space? What if back in that time, people had the ability to focus their eyes or their eyes were way better than what they are currently now because they needed them to see to survive? There could be a whole number of reasons. Along with it being fake information or fake news, that, that could very well be the case as well. 
well, but I wouldn't just necessarily rule it out. And I'm not going to lie, I would love to have one of those Nikon P1000 cameras. They're just so expensive for what they are. But the simple fact that you can zoom in and see the freaking rings of Saturn is pretty amazing to me. But let me know in the comments on what you guys think about this. Do you think that maybe in the past people just were built different and they could see, they, they could see further away, they could focus better, or maybe it's, it was all fake? Let me know in the comments. Let's talk about how the Soviet Union has 69 years of classified events that we'll never know of. For real, that's actually how long they lasted for. But the discovery of the Tissul Princess is one of the few deep, dark secrets that managed to see the light of day. Back in 1969, nice, near the village of Tissulsky in the Russian tundra of Siberia, a team of coal miners were busy digging deep into the ground. They were about 70 meters, which is 21 stories straight down. When the miners hit a wall, the felt looser than the rest, like it was hollow on the inside. They struck it real hard and the rubble came crumbling down, uncovering a hidden tunnel that they definitely did not dig themselves. A few of them go inside this tunnel to see what's in there and before long they come across something that none of them expected to find. A closed coffin, like 70 meters deep underground in a coal mine hidden inside a previously unknown tunnel system. This, this was something big. They dust it off and realize this ain't no regular coffin, but an ornately decorated white marble sarcophagus about 8 feet in length. Whatever this was, it was special and the higher ups would be paying big bucks for it. The miners tell their plant managers who take a look and instantly call in the military for full extraction. But they all realized once the Soviet army comes in, they're probably never going to see this coffin ever again. Hoping to get something out of this monumental discovery, they managed to pry open the lid to find the body of a perfectly preserved woman inside wearing a slightly see-through dress. She appeared to be about 30 years old, but the most interesting thing about her was that she was fully submerged in a pink liquid that filled the entire coffin. Her eyes were also wide open open and was so well preserved that she almost looked like she was still alive. The army gets there and they try to lift the sarcophagus out of the mine shaft, but it's way too heavy to move. So thinking nothing of it, they drain the liquid from the coffin to lighten the load too quickly to realize just how grave this mistake was. As soon as the pink liquid emptied from around the woman, she instantly started to decay and turn black. Turns out whatever this liquid was, it seemed to be preserving her to near perfection. They airlift it out of there and bring the coffin to a research lab where the scientists could not for the life of them identify what the pink liquid could have been. And when they dated the corpse to see how old the woman was, no one could believe what age they got. Immediately after this, the mine was shut down. The miners all let go, letting the military take over the facility in the 70s. The village of Tosulski nearby all hear about this find and the army takeover and everyone's talking about it. With many residents from the town very clearly recall hearing about it at school and all over the news at the time. For all they knew, this wasn't a myth. It actually happened. When the KGB starts investigating the matter, all of a sudden, the news stations stop talking about it. And follow-up reports come out, saying that it was all false information. And just like that, the entire discovery is painted as a hoax. Until decades later, when the Soviet Union fell, military operations like these got declassified, and articles reporting on it brought it back to the public eye. But the real craziest, most unbelievable part of it all... This coffin is allegedly said to have been over 800 million years old. Wow, that's actually a really cool story. If this is true, I would love to know what was that. I would have so many questions if I was a person that discovered that as well. Like, man, that would be an amazing discovery. It would definitely open your eyes to a whole nother world. Or at least it would open your eyes to a lot of questions that you may have. The following video is terrifying. Something is drawing this man into the woods. Now, he's about 150 yards in. His home is directly behind him. And he's in a remote area in the mountains. This situation has happened before. He said he's heard a baby crying. And that's what pulled him into the woods. Well, this time around, he hears children. Again, it's a remote area in the mountains. There's nobody out here. There shouldn't be anybody out here with him, much less children playing. But as you listen, you can clearly hear what sounds like a child. Is this some sort of creature or unidentified creature trying to lure him into the woods? Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think. Listen to this shit. Keep in mind, about 150 yards into a 20 acre wooded area. Listen, there's nothing around. Uh huh. You hear that? Uh 
That's my dog barking back at my house because he hears it. Y'all still think that shit's a panther? Because I don't. It's kind of hard to tell because it sounds like there's dogs in the background even further than what's behind him. And if I can hear those dogs, I'm pretty certain that I would be able to hear kids playing as well because that's what it sounds like to me. I see in the comments that some people say it's a mimicking spirit, but to me that did definitely sound like children playing. Let me know in the comments on what you thought. Hey, if you haven't done so already and you are enjoying the video, go ahead and give it a like. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. For everyone that's watching and or subscribed, thank you so much for watching and thank you for being subscribed. And for all of my active members that I have on my channel, thank you so much for being a member. I do have some new emojis coming out your way really soon. And for anyone else that is interested in the membership and further supporting my channel, for 99 cents a month, I do you have extra emojis that you can use in my chats and along with that when I upload a video you do not have to wait for my scheduled upload time it just immediately uploads and you can watch it as soon as it uploads so if any of that sounds of interest to you memberships are turned on again it is 99 cents a month and with that I cannot thank you enough for supporting the channel to that extent check this out and it's a theory about bells bells okay what the fuck was a bell for Oh, to get someone's attention. To get someone's attention, make noise, right? Yeah. Why did the churches have them? Uh, to, to get... To get people to uh, come to church, yeah. right? But check this out. What? Check this out, right? There's a theory. People are saying, and this is ancient. The bells, the shape of bells and the way they were made. If you really look at them, it's, it's almost made spiritually. Like, they put spiritual knowledge into the bells because it would give a frequency off when it's hit. Oh, okay. So, you know those uh, those bowls, the sound bowls? Yeah. And, and it zens you out. Yeah, it zens you out. And it will hit cer certain frequencies. Mm -hmm. Now, if you can imagine, every certain hours or every time there's church, to prepare the people to come to church, they would ring the bells. And what's being sent out? A frequency. So, whether it be a good frequency or bad frequency, most likely it was a good, good one. right? Now, World War II. Yeah. Ready? Okay. World War II, there was a huge initiative to destroy... What? Church bells. So what to bring people together? The theory goes not to bring people together, but to lift people up to a higher consciousness. And during the war, there was a big, like, I guess they're trying to. Mm -hmm. They're really, really trying to destroy as much bells as possible. That's, they that's ended so up weird. using, they tried using the metal for obviously like weapons yeah, and this yeah, and that. Yeah. But the conspiracy is the reason they wanted to take out all the bells was because it was actually lifting up the consciousness of everybody. Mm, so they didn't That's want that, that positive energy on them. Yeah. I have definitely heard about bells causing positive frequency, and that's one of the reasons why they destroyed a lot of bells back in that time. I guess I just do not understand why a higher power would want to destroy all the bells to, to cause harm or to cause the people from becoming more enlightened. I just don't understand that. Why keep everyone suppressed? Would people not prosper if they were all happier? Wouldn't that make the world a better, more rich place if people were more uplifted? I just find it hard to believe that they took bells away because of that reason. But I mean, there is a lot of other things out there that have really harsh frequencies, and it does seem like nowadays that that is the big push, pushing out more and more aggressive, more, more harmful frequencies. So maybe that was the play all along. Let me know in the comments or what you think about this. What is this? What is that? That That's a bat in space, right? Those are fangs. This is located 1,400 light years away, which is not that far, like it's in our neighborhood of the Milky Way. This is a molecular cloud called LDN43, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a space cloud and it's very dense, especially this one, which is so dense that it's blocking the light from all of the stars behind it. It's also huge. This thing is 12 light years long, which is three times longer than our closest star is to us. That is a really big bat. The best part is that she's a mother. The gas here is so dense that gravity takes over and it collapses and forms stars and around them planets and moons, which means there are bat baby stars, and those baby stars are what's illuminating it from within. 
which is kind of poetic. This is how we formed too. We also collapsed from a cloud and I need to know what our cloud looked like. Was our cloud this cool? The telomere, it's like a pill, right? And it's in trials right now. It is a anti-aging, cancer-reducing, chronic pain cure. They did a trial run on dogs first. And this one lady who had this dog, I think the dog was like 12 years old. It was dying of cancer. And she's like, can I just try it on my dog? And she said, within a week, dog's up running around, cancer-free. But what's crazy is that they did this interview. And by the time the interview came out, the CEO... Dead. dead. The CEO died, and on their official statement, the family was like, "We do not wish to disclose of how he died." <gasps> Spooky. I smell murder. Yeah, maybe. But now they're going to start doing human trials mid twenty twenty five. Sign me up. Isn't this like the beginning of um, I Am Legend? Oh yeah, it was like a it's pill a that could cure. Drug. Yeah. Did we know in I Am Legend? Did we ever find out what made them zombies? Yeah, it was the the pill that could cure cancer yeah they had, had that mirror and then all of a sudden we're all zombies i hope i have will smith next to me i'll yeah. be his dog oh, oh, oh. i don't think i could do that <laughs> i'm sure if there's a pill out there that can cure cancer it can stop you from aging or even reverse it all that would be a very expensive pill that i'm sure that there's very wealthy people out there that does not want that to exist unless it's for themselves. With that being said, would you take a pill that could reverse aging, stop aging, cure cancer, or any kind of aches and pains are just gone? Let me know, because I'm not gonna lie. There's some times in my life where I'm hurting really bad and I'm like, man, I would love to take this pain away, but I personally do not like taking medications because I, I really don't feel like it's good for your body. But if I could have something that would just stop pain altogether, I might give it a try. I think it's strange that fire doesn't hurt my eyes, but a flashlight does. I mean, we've all stared at fire. This is one of the biggest bonfires on record, and we've all looked at fireworks, and how come neither one of those seem to hurt our eyes? Yet when we look into the sun that is supposedly 93 million miles away, even though it's in these clouds, it definitely causes some eye irritation, causes you to squint and even look away. And I mean, they just tell us that the sun is a giant burning ball of fire, right? Well, this is what they tell us it looks like. This is their pictures. And this is mine with a solar filter on, zooming right on in. Does that look like a giant ball of fire to you? And hang around, because I want to show you something. I decided to do another little test with my solar filter, and I put it on while I had my iPhone light on, and a blue hot burning flame and my Zippo lighter. And let's see how that turned out. Okay, set objects. And what's funny is you couldn't detect the fire, only the iPhone light right there. And what's also strange is when I took my iPhone light and shined it in this paperweight, it looked awfully familiar to me, like what I see in the sky every day. And when I literally compared it, to the sun captured in my backyard and that iPhone light shining in that paperweight. So the sun appears to look exactly like my iPhone light in a paperweight. And it, like the light, is visible through a solar filter. And the sun, unlike fire, hurts my eyes just like a flashlight does. So maybe. Just maybe the Bible has it right when it says God made two great lights, a greater light and a lesser light to rule the night. iPhone light, the sun in my backyard, and moonlight. Maybe they're all just lights and not burning balls of gas or dusty space ball rocks 238,000 miles away. And by no means am I saying that they are giant iPhone lights, but you never know. They're... Could be giants up there just holding a light down over the firmament. I don't know. You don't know. We don't know. But I know what they're not. It's not a burning ball of gas 93 million miles away. It's just ridiculous if you still think that. And hopefully this video helped you see through the nonsense. But of course, this is all for entertainment purposes. I know that I just don't have a good enough camera to capture this amazing footage. And that, that's definitely not just CGI. Nope, my camera's not good enough. And I know that the sun 
is a burning ball of gas, 93 million miles away with all these solar ejections and flares. Entertainment only, people. I'm a satire account. I just am here to make you smile and laugh. Entertainment only. I bet there was probably a lot of people that skipped over this video. Honestly, this was not a bad video. It was way better than I was expecting. He did bring up some really fun points, but I do think that they're debunkable points, honestly. I do get that looking at the sun, being that it's basically a ball of fire, even though it's kind of not, it's like a extremely hot ball of fire. It's basically plasma. I get what he's saying, but I don't necessarily buy it either. It's kind of like, for example, if you take a weld, if you weld a piece of metal together to another piece of metal, the arc, that's fire, basically. And if you look at that, it's going to singe your eyes just like if you were looking at the sun. It's a different type of fire. It's a different type of element of light. It's definitely stronger than just basic fire. So I think the sun still applies to that same rule. I'm not a scientist, though, so I really don't know. But I have never heard anyone talk about lights and fire like that. And that was some pretty good points. I actually never would have thought of it like that. So let me know in the comments of what you guys think. Or did you just skip this guy altogether? Because a lot of people seem to do. But if you did, maybe you should go back and hear what he has to say. Walked as it, it walked. It literally sounded. <laughs> Stacy. What the f No, 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 no. That's... I don't know what the hell that was. I don't know if I want to know what the hell that was. Okay. Somebody tell me what that was. Just keep that a little closer. Is there somebody outside? Yeah? Please leave. It's not like I said don't. Well, I'm gonna look outside. Ooh, what the f that was that sound again. What the fuck? I gotta get the hell out of here. <sighs> Can't even run because it's nasty. Oh, shit. <sighs> okay. <sighs> I just heard something. Something made a sound in my ear. What the? F what the? F what the? F <sighs> what the f was that? Nope. 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 Just... Hey, I'm not gonna lie. I thought I was gonna see some kind of cheesy jump scare or some ghost or something standing in the corner, but I think that that might have been a genuine video of some guy in the woods using a Ouija board and or talk box. As someone that kind of has a little bit of skepticism about paranormal activity, I still still do not think that I have it in me to use a Ouija board. That just seems a little bit too much, which is weird. You would think that I would not have that problem being that I'm not a huge believer in paranormal stuff, but something inside of my stomach is telling me to just stay away from one of those. But I would love to go camping in a potentially haunted forest. I think that would be fun. To be a great picture. Your, your camera has been still too long. Can you just move it somewhere else? It's, it's just the shots just, you know, I just need to see some movement. No, no, the video camera. Can you can you show me something else? Like I want to see the cupola. Oh, gotcha. I I gotcha. I uh, I put it on a bounce I, to give you a sense of what's going on in our world and how tight of spaces we're in. Don and I are packed in the cupola right now, uh, and I'm moving my feet around while I'm talking to you around somebody who's doing bench press beneath me. Like somebody is on a bench press and they just put their feet out on the bench, and I'm moving my feet around them as they maneuver doing what we would call weightlifting, but you're pulling against a vacuum. So that's how tight of quarters we're in right now. It's on a red. A red. Yep. Are we allowed to so know who it is, so or again, is it their private time? Oh, it's okay. Here, here we go. Uh, you can, you can see now how Earth is. 
uh, Earth, the, the camera's adjusting to Earth, but then look at me, I'm in a shadow. So if I go down like this, now I'm properly exposed because we have it on auto exposure. And then I come up here and you can see Earth is all washed out. But if you, if you keep yourself with, within the confines of the neutral density filters we've put up, you can see that the camera's doing a pretty decent job at four f-stop uh, reduction of balancing the intensity of the light both inside and out. I know. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Can you show me the... Uh, oh, that's a great shot. That looks awesome. Can, can you show me how the shutters work? Did we lose you? Yeah, can I see a close-up of the handle, like that handle? Because one of the first conversations you and I had done was about that handle. Man, anyone that knows me knows that I really love space. I love the theory of space. I, I would love to explore it. If I had the opportunity of someone saying, hey, let's take a rocket up to space so you can see the Earth, I would love to do that. People are going crazy right now because of what's literally just happened. So in the last couple of weeks, there has been these really creepy dolls just randomly appearing in the streets across the world. These things being dubbed as Halloween penguins seems like some sort of Halloween prank until it gets worse. So reportedly, a young boy a couple of weeks ago actually went missing from his family home. Then one of the neighbours actually came forward and said that they had spotted the boy picking up one of these weird dolls outside the house just before he went missing. Many people also reporting seeing the penguins in one place and then suddenly moving to another. I don't know if this is some kind of stunt or Halloween prank or something a lot more sinister is going on here. I would also be very curious as to where did those penguins come from. And I would also kind of think that it could be one of two to three things. One, it could be a harmless, innocent little thing people are doing, just placing cute little penguins around. Or to me, it could be a sign of trafficking. That's an indication of a target spot of interest where someone's staking out the place and they're looking to kidnap or do something really bad. That's where my mind goes with that kind of stuff. It probably is not the case. It might have just been a fun little thing that people are doing around the community. But my mind goes into some dark places when I see things like that. And I also hope that you guys had a really good Halloween. If any of you celebrate that with your kids or you just enjoy it yourself, I hope you guys had a good one. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here today. As always, if you enjoyed any of the clips that we watched, Links are in the description down below. With that being said, have a good day.